Track 20. Their holidays start at the beginning of July. Listen again. Their holidays start at the beginning of July. Track 21. When you start university, you'll probably find it's not all that easy to balance the time you spend on studying with the time you spend going out with your friends. In fact, one of the biggest problems you'll have is managing your time. Of course, it's perfectly understandable. I mean, in many cases, it's probably the first time you'll have lived away from home, so you'll have to do lots more things for yourself, like buying your own food, washing your clothes and managing your own money. At the same time, there's no one there to tell you what time to come home at night or what time to get up in the morning. On top of that, at university, you won't have as many hours of class as you did at school and your tutors will expect you to study on your own a lot more. So you might feel you've got a lot of free time on your hands. So how do you deal with it? Well, to be honest, I don't think there's an easy answer, but I think it helps to go to all your classes, however tired you are. Print a copy of your timetable and put it on the wall in your bedroom. Actually, your university might even have a system for alerting you on your mobile when your lectures are. Apart from that, you could try not going out during the week and keeping your social life for the weekend. I'm not sure that's very easy, though. One thing I will say, though, is that at the end of the year, after your exams, you can really relax. Track 22 I started this new job a couple of weeks ago, and I'm having a lot of trouble with my work-life balance. In my last job, we had fixed hours. We had to be at the office at nine on the dot, and we always finished at exactly five. Any work we hadn't finished, we could just leave for the next day. But this new job's very different. I mean, in this job, we can come into the office any time between eight and ten in the morning. Then we can choose whether to have a lunch break or not. Then it gets a bit complicated. Um. Uh, if we have a lunch break, we can leave between 4 and 6. If we don't have a lunch break, we can go home between 3 and 5. OK, well, at first this system sounded really good, especially for me because I have young children. But the problem is that if we haven't finished our work, we have to finish it off at home. So it's actually very difficult to draw the line between work and home. For example, on Mondays, I can leave the children at school, go to the gym and get into the office quite late. But I can't take a lunch break because I need to leave early to pick the children up from school. They come out at four. And then I have to work from home in the evening to finish what I have to do. Track 23 If you look at this chart, you can see how we plan our projects. This one is a survey we're working on this year about where people like to shop. OK. Well, we always start by having a team meeting. That's in the first column called tasks. So, in this team meeting, we decide what we need to do, who's going to do it and um, when it's got to be ready, right? So, you can see here in the second column, we've got the start date of the project. That's the 23rd of January. That's the same day we have the team meeting. If you look down the tasks column, you can see that the first thing we have to do is write a draft questionnaire. You know, like uh, an outline of the questions we want to ask. Then we have to check the questionnaire to make sure the questions are right. If you look at the lines in column three, you can see the dates when we have to complete important tasks in the project. These are what we call milestones in the project. For example, when we've checked the questionnaire on the 25th of April, we'll have reached a milestone. And when we've completed the survey on the 30th of June, we'll have reached another milestone. On the 15th of August, when we finish entering the data on the database, 
we'll have finished the first phase of the project. The second phase of the project involves writing the report. We'll be doing that between the 15th of August and the 15th of September, and that's the deadline for the project to be handed to the client. Track 24 Section 2 You will hear a human resources manager talking about her company's work-life balance policy. First, in the exam, you will have 20 seconds to look at questions 1 to 5. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 5. In our company, we believe that our employees are more productive, you know, they work better if they're happy. Naturally, we have to make sure the company makes a profit, but at the same time, we need to think about the physical and mental health of our employees. We do understand that they aren't just working machines, so we have a policy of helping them find a fair balance between their work and their private lives, what we call a work-life balance. We do this in several ways. Firstly, we have a family-friendly policy, so parents can look after their children when they're very young. For example, sometimes they need to work flexible hours, you know, times that aren't fixed. Other times, parents have to work part-time, and quite a lot work from home. Another example of our family-friendly policy is our generous maternity leave package. In our company, we allow women who've had a baby to take a whole year off work after the baby's born. And of course, while they're away, their jobs are protected. Before you hear the next part of the talk, in the exam, you will have 20 seconds to look at questions 6 to 8. Track 25. Now listen and answer questions 6 to 8. Because we want our employees to be happy, we carried out a survey recently to find out which working patterns are really most popular. In general, our staff prefer to work at the office. In fact, nearly half come in during regular office hours, you know, from 9 to 5. Anyway, we also asked about part-time work, working from home, and another option, job sharing. Job sharing is a kind of part-time work where two people share the responsibilities for one full-time job. Anyway, we found that only 5% of our staff wanted to share a job, so it's not very popular on the whole. But when it comes to working part-time, we were surprised to find that 27% of our employees would actually prefer it. That's a very high number, really, over a quarter of the staff. And then it was interesting to see that quite a lot of our staff, 20% in fact, would like to work from home. Before you hear the rest of the talk, in the exam you will have 20 seconds to look at questions 9 and 10. Track 26. Listen carefully and answer questions 9 and 10. I'd like to give you an example of the kind of person who benefits most from our family-friendly policy. Sally is one of our assistants in accounting who has two small children. Sally's husband travels abroad a lot, so she has to look after the children on her own most of the time. Both the children go to a nursery early in the morning. So we've agreed that Sally can come in at 8 o'clock after she leaves the children. At lunchtime, Sally's sister picks the children up from the nursery. But she has to go to work herself at 3 o'clock. So Sally leaves the office at 2 to collect the children from her sisters. And she makes up the extra time by finishing her work at home. That is the end of Section 2. In the exam, you will have half a minute to check your answers.